Oh yeah. You ready for this? The Lincoln Navigator. Take a look at it. It's big, it's powerful, it's comfortable, and this is finally a real SUV. And what do I mean by that? It's body on frame. You can tow with it, you can haul with it, and there's a real third row in the back that is not some joke that they just added in here just for the sake of it to try to sell that feature. This vehicle is going to do pretty much everything a minivan is going to do without having some of the stigma around it. And there's so much stuff to cover on the inside. Really, this is the main reason you buy it is the interior space and its utility. So let's get started. The interior space, that's really what you care about. That's probably why you're watching this. Lincoln has finally stepped up their game. You can tell there's a lot more attention to detail in here as there should be for kind of an upscale product. The leather is soft, the cross stitching is good, the little details all over the place pretty much add up to the price point, like this plastic looking marble. And then you kind of get to the biggest problem with this interior space and you know you can't talk about the positives without talking about things that they should not be doing and this interior is littered with more plastic chrome than any 1990s chrysler i've ever seen it is so overdone now you know like in terms of the speaker grills they have alloys here and i think that is what they should be simulating pretty much across all these bezels it blinds you in direct sunlight which pretty much forces you to tint this thing out because it's there's a lot of glass in here. And it just feels very, very generic and cheap in an otherwise really well-designed space. Now, Lincoln has made another questionable material choice here on the center console area. There is so much shiny black plastic. And combined with the Plastichrome, it is just a reflection magnet, a fingerprint magnet, and there's dust everywhere. And I know the type of people that are gonna drive this are not gonna to wanna to be spending time trying to polish and clean this up. I think it was really a poor decision, even though it has a big wow factor when you first look at it and it's all clean, but you're gonna be spending a lot of time looking at how dirty this looks. And I think they would, all they have to do is change it to either matte or something that is way less reflective than this. Now really, that's the biggest negative of this interior space because most everything else is really well sorted, namely the comfort. Lincoln loves to talk about how their seats have 60,000 way adjustments and I find that it's really easy to get comfortable in here. All your controls are on the door so you can see what the hell you're doing. They're not on the side of the seat and that makes it extremely easy to kind of adjust what you need to do and the seat massager button is there as well. It's just a one touch thing so you don't have to go to the touch screen. All your controls are logically laid out. There's a physical HUD button on the steering wheel so you can turn it on and off. Speaking of the HUD, they're using a Texas Instruments DLP projection. So it's really clear, it's super bright if you're using it and you rely on that. Your infotainment is Ford Sync and it is Panasonic designed and for the most part getting around is really easy but it's very, very heavily reliant on using the touchscreen and it is difficult to get around while you're driving. You have to do a lot of menu jumping. But really, your main controls are simple to get to, like the sound. You know, that's really what you wanna do. You wanna tweak your EQ because the sound system in here is the Revel Ultima, which is a division of Harman, Harman Kardon. Of course, they own everything. The sound is pretty good in here. It's because it's such a solid, quiet interior space, you're gonna be spending a lot of time listening to music or, and, you know, or drown out the kids or whatever you have going on in the back. Your drive selector is no rotary knob, it's a push button. So park, reverse, neutral, D uh, for drive is all here. And it's this is probably the best way to do like a digital shifter assembly without having to deal with like switches and knobs or a digital stick. Your pedals are adjustable, or at least your gas pedal is adjustable. Uh, I mean, it's just really simple and easy to figure out. Most everything is, is really well designed. 
I don't like the fact that the HVAC controls, you need to look at the screen to see your fan speed. When you turn the volume knob, it takes over your whole infotainment to tell you what your volume is. I don't know why they need to full screen that, but for, for really the things that are wrong in here are very minute. Now storage is immense. It's pretty much minivan levels of storage. The door pockets are huge. You could probably fit a two liter bottle of Coke in there. Your armrest, you could store probably all the ashes of your dead pets in the urns. Same thing with down here. I mean, it, there's just so much room to throw crap in here. This could be a second home. The seats, again, in the back, are just as comfortable as the front. You have control of the audio system in the back. You have your own HVAC controls with its own separate uh, fan motor so it doesn't affect the front passengers. There's things in the infotainment where you can kind of set up each key individually for each driver so all the settings carry over depending on that. I mean, there's a lot of thought to detail in here. And one of the best parts about getting in this car, namely in the back, it's easy to get in the third row. Hopping in those back seats, moving it forward is really usable for adults. It's, it's crazy that you could legitimately fit six people in here uh, easily and still have room to haul shit, which is really why you want something like this. With that third row down, I mean, just take a look at how wide open it is. And that's why I said it's like a small apartment in here. If you're somebody that is towing, hauling, going cross country, or you need this for real utility. Uh, this is a great option instead of getting an F-150, which a lot of this architecture is shared on, which I'm gonna talk about during the drive. But for the most part, I really like this. You know, if you, re if you want a utility vehicle, you buy this. Pretty much screw all the other crossovers, spend the money and uh, just enjoy life or don't, whatever. Now, lastly, you wanna know about the ass end of the Navigator because, well, that's what this is also about. I had my Ferrari in Ames and I went to Ames Lincoln and you know what, the honeys weren't having it here. And I bought this and as soon as I got it, uh, I was picking up single moms, I put all their kids in here and we had a, a ye good old time. And one of the things she was concerned about, uh, this is Tanya, she said, you know, I don't wanna push down the seats manually, I wanna do it all digital. And there's buttons for all of this, there's so many buttons that you don't even know what's happening, your head's gonna spin. So you push all these and the seats go down, they go up electronically. Well, the second row doesn't, but the third row does, and it's so damn convenient. There's USB ports littered all over the back here, so you can charge your iPads, your uh, back massager, whatever you have, I would say the Navigator is your best friend. The hell do you close it? Setting off in the new Lincoln Navigator. It's time to get comfortable because that is what this driving experience is about. There is a handful of different drive modes. You have conserve, which I feel like that's what you're gonna be doing quite often in here to save fuel economy. You have excite, you have normal, and you have four by four mode, slippery, and deep conditions, which is often what, what type of situation I'm in. Now, I'm gonna leave this pretty much in normal, this whole ride. And this car has electronic dampers. It's not air ride, it's not even an option. And what you need to know about the Navigator right off the bat is it's built on the F-150 chassis or platform. And you can tell underneath pretty much from three quarters of the car, it's all F-150. Now, of course, they've done things with bushings, sway bars, shocks, spring rates to make it much more softer and compliant. But when you look at the rear quarter, it's a totally different frame. And that is because they wanted to have independent rear suspension in the back. And when you put independent rear, you don't get the springiness and the bounciness of a truck. So even though this is a real truck frame, you still have independent rear suspension and it makes a huge difference. This is still going to appeal to those who like a more truck solid truck ride. This is not like a crossover or a, uh, you know, one of the smaller SUVs that is unibody. So that's a huge pro if you want something like this. 
the big thing is you have this electronic gauge cluster, which is really runs in kind of minimal mode. I'm not sure why they don't have physical bezels around it because so much of the screen is wasted for just pretty much showing your, your speedometer and just other minor information. I like the graphic design. It's a really good screen. It's bright. The black levels are good. Uh, and you know, the, of course you have screens, you have all the climate control systems in here. And then of course you have the high out output 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost, which is pretty much shared with the Raptor. And you know, this is a good vehicle. If you don't want to buy an F-150, this thing drives extremely well without air suspension. The steering is pretty good without being totally like boat like I mean the parking lot or the turning circle is good you don't feel like you're, you know you need to do 23 point turns to get this thing around which is good if you're towing a boat I mean really everything works in here just like you would expect it would you know coming from an f-150 the trans is responsive and even the power output you know I was kind of surprised it almost it doesn't feel like a generic V6. And I think half of it is because they're not pumping artificial engine noise in here like they do with the twin turbo EcoBoost F-150s and Mustangs. It sounds natural, it sounds good. And of course it's more refined because they wanna make this a quiet cab or quiet driving experience. And I think between the comfort, the transmission smoothness, the engine performance, there's very few things that are wrong with this other than the absolute um, massive weight to it. This feels very heavy, but you know, th that's what you're getting when you're getting into something like this. It's, it's a great driving SUV. It's something you can take cross country and never have really any complaints about it. I mean, you know, I talked about a lot of the weirdness on the interior, but there's not too much to complain about in terms of driving experience with this at all. Now you do have to get yourself a towing package if you're gonna to be towing anything over like 6,000 pounds. It adds coolers and stuff like that. Um, and it has trailer hitch assist. But you know, it again, all this tech stuff that you wanna talk about, you can spend with a salesperson. This is straight up classic kind of like Ford F-150 and a lot of the luxury features that Lincoln has built into this. Take it for a drive, see what you think. Final thoughts on the Lincoln Navigator. And surprisingly for me, it's crazy to think there are not too many full-size, full-frame SUVs on the market. We are littered with all these hatchbacks turned crossover that's just a car with a slight lift, or these SUVs pretending to be trucks. And the Navigator is a true truck. It is body on frame, it has the suspension, the four-wheel drive system that you would expect in like an F-150. That's just a huge pro for so many people. The second thing is you get everything that you would want from that truck, but in a luxury car-ish package. And what do I mean by that? It's quiet, it's refined, and it rides well. You, you don't get the bouncy truck ride with this, but you get most of the capability. The seating comfort is really good. The seating design, the massaging seats, and the configurability of the seats and the way that you can use it as a cargo vehicle, vehicle is pretty kick-ass. Now, the negative parts are, and let's just be real, the interior space, it's like Ford and Lincoln, they spent a lot more time with this generation, but it just feels really, really chintzy or just tacky. The plastic chrome is excessive. It doesn't look good. I mean, it looks good in the right light when it's new. The piano gloss pla black plastic is just way overdone. And I feel like, you know, it's a lost opportunity for them. You can see what luxury car manufacturers are doing and they just don't know how to do it here. Now, it's easily fixed with mid-cycle refreshes, but you know, you're gonna have to take a look at this and see, is it a deal breaker for you? And I don't think it will be for a lot of people because of the capability of the truck overall. I mean, you're basically getting a Ford Raptor drivetrain in here in a hauler, which is pretty kick-ass. Now, let's get on to the other part of this. This was given to me from Ford, Lincoln, and Ames, a dealership, because Lincoln basically has no budget to release press cars, a vehicle that I can evaluate for a week. So the dealership offered it to me, and it, what, I'm not paid to do this. And I think one of the most interesting parts about it is there's a kajillion dealerships in the US. And you know, dealerships have a bad name. And personally, 
I've been through Ford ownership and I would never do it again because of all the problems I had. But what makes this kind of dealership unique, and I've never seen this before, is they bake into the price of the car a lifetime drivetrain warranty that's underwritten by CNA. So it doesn't matter what you buy, a Ford Mustang, a Shelby GT350, this Navigator, you walk away and have an un unlimited mile uh, drive engine, transmission, all wheel drive warranty. So you can just drive the hell out of it and not worry. And you can take it to any ASC certified mechanic, including a dealership for the life of the car. And I think that's a huge bonus if you're gonna finance a car like this. And it makes it compelling if you're coming from out of state and you know, you want to buy a car and you, you're getting this kind of feature built into it. It's neat. The owner obviously knows somebody in CNA and he just builds it into the cost of the dealership experience. So that's something to note. But regardless, if you're looking for this, I'll be curious to see what you think. If you own one, if you've driven one, if you're going to turn it into an Uber, post up here and let me know. Appreciate your time of watching this and I'll see you next video.